Hey guys, so we have been looking at linear systems, we have been looking at linear systems in 2D and uh, so we defined the notion of a fixed point and then we argued for you know why uh, a good understanding of linear systems is useful and how they can actually help throw light even in you know more complicated nonlinear uh, problems. And then we also uh, offered a word of caution when you know uh, conclusions based on linearization uh, may fail, right. We gave examples of where linearization would work and therefore the power of a strong knowledge of linear systems is so useful and where linearization can fail when you are at the borderline cases, right. So and then we looked at some interesting examples, you know, some somewhat uh, uh, cooked up or artificial examples you might think, but they are interesting nonetheless differential equations, coupled differential equations which were linear in nature and then <clears throat> that led us to uh, you know some fun uh, analysis using the linear toolbox. Now what I want to do is actually switch, uh, switch gears or switch uh, direction and get you an introduction to the uh, Monte Carlo method. But in order to do that I will use our own study of uh, the linear systems and you know the kind of things that we have been doing uh, with um, 2D linear models as a sort of bridge. So use what we have already been doing and gently introduce you to the Monte Carlo method and then we will see examples drawn from you know other kinds of contexts you know uh, in future modules. So today what in this module what we will do is we will first look at um, just quickly uh, recall what we did with uh, linear systems, the, the general picture we have. All right, so we start with the general theory of 2D linear systems. This is just pure recall, right? So we have seen this. So you have a system which is like x dot equal to x plus dy, y dot equal to c, x plus dy. So all the information, all the qualitative features are contained inside the matrix A, B, C, D. You diagonalize this matrix, obtain the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 and uh, or equivalently look at the trace of this matrix and the, disc, uh, and the determinant of this matrix. Just these two numbers basically tell you all about the nature of the fixed point at the origin, right. So we, we have seen that this picture, you know, very um, compactly captures all possibilities, you know, for your, the nature of the fixed point at the origin, right. So you see that the large majority of systems actually give you saddle points. Saddle points are um, you know points where your system is stable along one direction but unstable along another direction and then uh, you see that there is another uh, you know fairly common but not as common as saddle points is, is that of nodes. You know some half of them are stable and the other half are unstable you know roughly and um, um, also you can have stable and unstable spirals, you can also have these borderline cases, you know borderline cases are the where points where you should be careful if you are doing linearization of a non-linear problem, we have seen all of this. Okay, so now what I want to do is pose this problem, so I am going to zoom this out. So consider this linear system where you know you have this vector x, y and your matrix A equal to A, B, C, D and where I do not know what these numbers A, B, C, D are. I am just telling you that these numbers are, are real, right. And they are independently, they are drawn independently and from a uniform distribution in the interval minus 1 to 1, right. Suppose I, I do this. Now I can ask what is the probability that you know the, the fixed point that I just randomly pull out of this box. You can think of this as an ensemble of matrices. So uh, in some sense this is uh, you are considering an ensemble of random matrices. So that is a theory of random matrices itself is quite an advanced and beautiful theory and you can you know get many of those insights even by working uh, starting with something as simple as 2 by 2 matrices, right. So this is actually you know the, these kinds of games that we will play, you can play more such games and actually uncover many beautiful results and then there are ways to extend this to our arbitrary n by n matrices you know and so in fact the whole theory of random matrices is itself a very um, you know deep and beautiful theory and a lot of it can be 
experimentally discovered you can basically play with mathematica and uncover many of these results which are already know and then there are new results waiting to be discovered and so on so for for our purposes we start very small just consider random matrices which are 2 by 2 and a b c d are all real you can and we don't impose any constraint on the structure of the matrix sometimes it's useful to demand that your random matrix is real symmetric you know and these are uh, or you can demand that your random matrix is is complex hermitian and so on right so but we here we are not looking at anything of that kind we just allow a b c d to be whatever they want as long as they are real and which they lie in the interval minus 1 to 1 all right and so one way of course of uh, generating uh, real symmetric matrices out of something like this is to take generate one random matrix a b a at random and then add add its transpose to itself and divide it by two so this is one standard approach and this will yield for you uh, something called the uh, gaussian orthogonal ensemble right it's possible to generate pro provided you draw your distribution you choose your distribution of um, the elements uh, appropriately so if you make them gaussian then it gives you this famous gaussian orthogonal ensemble which has some very very nice properties and so on but that's a completely different story altogether here we are just doing uh, um, you are playing a game right where all these numbers a b c d are drawn from a uniform distribution now let us generate a million such random matrices and <coughs> Well, the font has changed because I am trying to switch between, you know, this mode in Mathematica where it is meant for, uh, you know, type setting, a setting of a certain kind and then I also want to evaluate and so in the middle of all this sometimes the font gets messed up but hopefully you can, you are able to see what is written there but anyway let me also explain what is going on. So we simply generate a very large number of random matrices and do this analysis which already we have you know find the find tau find delta and based on the value of tau and delta you can compute you know you can tell what is the nature of the fixed point there and then by doing this repeatedly for many 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 matrices you can ask what fraction of these random matrices are going to be you know stable nodes or what fraction would be unstable nodes and so on right for every possibility on that uh, two dimensional phase diagram that we had we can just do a counting with random matrices and figure out what fraction are going to give you which you know cover which zone of your phase diagram so in order to do this <coughs> i'm going to use uh, a command called or a um, function called random real i suppose you have already seen this but anyway random real is just a um, function which will return for you a uniform distribution between 0 and 1 if you just leave give it no arguments but there is a way for you to give it uh, you know shift your origin to somewhere else or in other words you can ask it to give you a random number with mean something other than 0 and with whatever variance or whatever there are ways to set this then you will have to set it set the argument but if I just simply do not give any argument then random real is going to yield for me so let me show you let me just do this random real um, i have to make sure that this is set to input so if i do this input there you go so i can evaluate this by hitting shift enter i, I get a number 0 0.29 i can evaluate it again i get some other number so i get a range of these so i can in fact do a um, table of this let's say i give, make a table of 10 so it gives me a bunch of numbers you can see that all of them lie between 0 and 1 and i am telling you that it's a it's a uniform distribution so one way to check this is let me generate even larger number and then i don't want to print this out but let me make use of another function called histogram if i do this histogram of this table then you see you see that histogram is corresponds to roughly 
that of a uniform distribution. And so, the more such numbers you take, the closer it will become to the uniform distribution. So, basically all regions of this interval from 0 to 1 are covered uniformly. So, that is what is meant by a uniform distribution and that is what we want here, right. So, using a random variable which runs between 0 and 1, it is easy to generate a bunch of random numbers which are uni going to uniformly cover the region from minus 1 to 1. So, in order to do that, I have taken 2 times random real minus 0 0.5. So, this is one way of doing it. There are, surely, there are other ways of doing it. So, there you go. I have and I am going to call this some list. I have called it a list. You will see in a moment why I am doing this, right. So, you can look at this and you know play this game for yourself. So, let me actually uh, reduce this number and then hide this. Okay, so now I have a list is equal to, so this for you will give you numbers like this. If you want, you can, maybe I do not even want to uh, equate it to a list. So, let me again do histogram of this, histogram, histogram, so it is covering yeah, so there are too few numbers, so it's not uh, it's not so illuminating yet. But if I increase this number, you'll see that it is indeed a uniform distribution, and which run from minus one to plus one. Right? Okay. So this is one way of doing it. So you can use you know other techniques like using of a <coughs> unit step function and so on. Okay, this is simple and I am using this. So, my solution is the following. So, by the way, so the question is, can you generate a million such random matrices and already even without my showing you the solution, can you use your skill in Mathematica to find out what is the probability that your fixed point is going to be a saddle point, what is the probability that your fixed point is a an unstable spiral and so on, every possibility. Right. So, by the way, so this is this is a, an example of the powerful Monte Carlo method. So, what is Monte Carlo? What does it involve? So, Monte Carlo, uh, the name itself comes from, you know, the town Monte Carlo, which is uh, famous for gambling. So, you know, people would bet their money on outcomes of various kinds. And so, there is a probability which is uh, associated with events, right. Some events would be desirable. And so, they want to have a strong hold on, you know, uh, maximizing the probability of certain kinds of events and reducing the probability of other kinds, right. And that is where people put in money and so on. So, that is, since there is a stochastic element to this approach, since there is a randomness involved, right. So, you simply get a very large number of random matrices and you count what fraction of it is going to give you of a certain kind and so on. And so, that is why it is a an example of the use of the Monte Carlo method, right. So, there are more sophisticated ways of using this and so on, maybe some of which we might look at. Some examples for sure we will look at, but uh, I am going to show you my solution now. You can pause the video and crack this problem on your own or you can just allow this video to continue. So, my solution is the following, I am not claiming that this is the best solution available, this is one solution. So, let me zoom this to 125 percent, yeah. So, this is what I am doing is, I am first of all generating a an A list, a B list, uh, I want to generate these four lists A, B, C and D, right. So, these are the four numbers that I, I want to, uh, you know, generate and create a matrix. So, in order to do this, I will just say that let me generate some large number of A's, large number of B's, large number of C's and D's and corresponding to each I, index I will be the one whole matrix in, involving all four numbers. So, the nice thing about math Mathematica is you can just take a whole array and you know make arrays operate on each other arrays as if they are like numbers. You can just deal with them as any regular variables. So, if I want to create a list which is um, which is a list of the discriminants. Ultimately, all the information that is there in these matrices is uh, 
you know it contains some more information than actually what we need. All we need is information about delta and tau. So, I am going to create this delta list and tau list and how to create delta list very easy. All I have to do is I do a list times d list minus b list times c list very simple it is as if I am computing a times d minus b times c and so if I do this it automatically means that you do it for every i, i going from 1 to n mat. Then tau list is simply a squared plus d squared right. So, that is what uh, sorry it is a, a plus d it is not even not square there is no square it is just the trace of this matrix. So, it does if it computes the trace of each of these matrices and creates a list and puts them all together and then there is a discriminant list. So, discriminant list is tau squared minus 4 delta right. So, delta is determinant now discriminant of your uh, quadratic equation which was tau squared minus 4 delta once again I just simply use this trick to define a new uh, list called disk list is equal to tau squared minus 4 delta that is it. And then in order to get the fraction of saddle points, so I am using a simple one line code to get this you see all I do is find the length of this thing called delta list. It just tells you total number of elements and so then I have I have to find the sum and then divide it by the length that is the total number of matrices. So, delta list of uh, length, length of delta list is going to be basically the same as length of A list or length of B list all of them are going to be the same it is just n mat I could have directly used this but it is ok I mean length is a is a useful uh, function for you all to be aware of. So, unit step is a useful function right I could have actually used unit uh, step also to generate this shift that I did to to get uh, you know my uniform distribution between minus 1 and 1. So, what does this unit step do it says that so let us look at what unit step does. So, I can take an example unit step so I have to convert this into a So, if I do unit unit step unit step of 1 is 1, but unit step of any number less than 0 is 0 that is all right. So, why do I want to use unit step here? So, basically I want to look at all these you know uh, all these entries in delta list which are less than 0 whenever unit step is negative sorry whenever, whenever delta is negative unit step of a negative number will be 0. So, 1 minus 0 will be 1. So, I just count this total of all of this it will give me 1. So, whenever delta is negative all of that is counted here and then I divide by length which is actually nothing but n mat in this case right and then I have to do slash slash n to get a number out of this. So, likewise I can do frac fraction of unstable node. So, what all do what all conditions must hold I must have delta list should be delta should be positive. So, I, I take unit step of delta then it, it should also simultaneously give me uh, I should also have simultaneously have tau to be positive. So, I take the product with tau and then tau list unit step of disk list and so I must also have uh, discriminant to be positive. So, all three conditions when they are simultaneously met then uh, the simple way to count all of this is to just take the product of these three and then I just total all of them up done very very simple right. So, if you were to write this type of code in some other language surely you will have to spend many more lines and it is uh, it's very nice very convenient for quick calculations right and you can do even big numbers you know. So, look at n mat. So, I then finally what do I want I am computing only these two quantities but I will allow you guys to play with you know improvise on this code and get fraction of for example, stable nodal that should be the same as fraction of unstable no nodes and so on right. So, there is some symmetry in the problem. So, let us look at what happens here I am going to run my n mat all the way from 100,000 up to 1 million in steps of 100,000 and then I will finally plot all of this. So, this is I am going to run this then I have list line plot of 
so when i say all and 1 comma 3 it gives me basically a plot of data with respect to the first and the third so the third here is frac unstable node let's look at that one first so it see it's going to some value like 0 0.09 right so you can uh, make this even more sophisticated try to get error bars you know like using using the methods that we have described earlier for calculating error bars when you are using whenever you have any stochastic element and when you have lots of samples there is a way to estimate the error and you can try to plot all of them so let's look at what happens to the other, other case fraction of saddle points there it goes to some number close to half and this is not a surprise right it's not a surprise because geometrically we can see that you know half of this plane is pretty much for every value of delta less than 0 it's a saddle point although i mean this kind of geometric picture you should not blindly believe because it's not always clear that <clears throat> just because a geometric picture shows that you know one half of the region is uh, covered by points of a certain kind it's not necessary in this case perhaps it is uh, there is a way to argue for it more rigorously it's not necessary that you know the fraction of your sample space is the same as the geometric area that you are seeing right so this has to be argued out carefully but in this case it does turn out that the fraction of matrices which give me saddle nodes is exactly half right so perhaps there is some symmetry argument you can give and and in any way justify this but i'm just giving you a word of caution on blindly interpreting some geometric uh, area so it's not necessary that there is a uniform distribution involved right it's not like all parts of your plane are to be treated with on the same footing maybe in this case it is but not not in every case of this kind all right so what have we seen in this uh, module we have looked looked uh, we have made a connection between linear systems the general theory of linear systems in 2d and used it to open up open a window to the monte carlo method right using two by two matrices generating a large number of random matrices and checking that you know indeed with with a probability of half you are going to get saddle nodes saddle nodes are the most common kind of fixed points in linear systems okay on this note let us uh, end this module. We will see more Monte Carlo in future modules. Thank you.